Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Veilguard. I don't I'm keep wanting to say like Mass Effect or Dragon Age Inquisition or something. Uh, I just ran out to get Domino's. Anybody who's from the streaming days will remember that I used to get Parmesan bites all the time when I streamed from Domino's. And uh, I did get some, but I took my ears off. I took off the elf ears to do that because I did not... Did not want to go. I went on this. This was enough. I was like, no, I can't do it. I can't wear the ears out. That'll be too much. So, oh, y'all, uh, when, what is it? When, when Re Rook said that Varric talked about Solas and said, oh, he, I, he, Varric knew you'd say that. He's like, he's, oh, he's always saying half truths to try to like absolve himself of any fall. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that was just like just cut right to the heart of it you know what i mean i thought that was really very cutting <laughs> you know oh here's the mirror that you can change your appearance at so that's good we can just we just have a magic mirror just have a magic mirror the cat is asleep right over there on the bed right in front of like the this like mirror that i've got along the back wall that i have up in an effort to like put light on my face <laughs> so that like it's not like i don't know just coming from behind me um Dang, okay, um, I do, I think I remember, yeah, you can't change your class or your backstory, which makes sense, right? Because you've already, they've already brought it up, right? It's like, oh, you're part of the Morn Watch, and if you change it, it's like, oh, the Shadow Lords, or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, B, yes, I haven't made any changes, so that's good. Haha. <laughs> I also like her, like, idle animations, and, like, we were standing near the edge, and was, she was, like, wobbly, you know? I really liked that. Um, anyway, yes, I, my sister made fun of me, because she was, like, one of my sisters was, like, you're just gonna spend 20 minutes staring at, like, a wall, or, like, a uh, something, and I ended up staring at pots and rock art, which is just something I would do. Let's see what we... Solus has automatic opening doors. Why did we kick it? Oh, my common appearance can, oh no, I was like, can I, I thought that was like my casual wear. Could you please give me, oh, okay, this is actually cooler than I thought. Harellen's bolts, oh my gosh, no way. Isn't that Harellen, Harellen is, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Aegis of the Fallen Kingdom? Wow. What is that icon for Varric? <laughs> I do love... Uh, it's, it's really interesting because Varric hasn't really changed between games, so it's interesting seeing him older. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been 10 years, you know? And... Solus, of course, doesn't look like he's aged at all. Can I talk to you again, or...? I wish I could be out there with you, Rook. Just be careful, all right? How is he still talking? Like, I feel like his esophagus got, you know, punctured. Did Bianca break all the way? See, that's the thing. Solus could have just, like, pushed him away with his mind. Although, to be fair, that might have hurt him more. No, nope, it wouldn't have. He stabbed him. I don't know. I couldn't really tell. I was keeping an eye out because I knew it was going to happen. But I was like, because you could tell. They're, oh, they're scuffling with a knife. Like, of course someone's going to get stabbed. And, of course, it's going to be Varric because he's not a god, you know? Um... Or God adjacent, and uh, I, I was like, is he gonna accidentally stab him or purposely stab him? And I, I, I honestly couldn't tell if he did or not. Oh, here's where I can change my wardrobe. Give me something else. Yeah, sort of an ancient champion sword, still polished and sharp in spite of. Oh, it's not gonna let me change the look of an item. I mean, <laughs> she's like, yeah, look at this. I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like. I mean, just yes. But I would like to. Like, is the sword? It's just the appearance of weapons. It's not the actual weapons themselves. Like, do I get other weapons? I mean, this is obviously elven stuff, right? But, like... 
Alright. It'd be cool if they gave me different casual... Oh my gosh, I have options! Okay, okay. Armor of Bellano. It is! Okay. Harellen, I do believe... I think Harellen was the name of the... I'm sorry, I'm like totally like... Ugh, I'm sitting forward and then he did not be in the camera like that. But, um... I swear... Or is it? Oh, it was Felisan. I don't know why Harellen. Harellen is like, I think what you call like an elder. So I felt this was important enough to actually verbally interject. Harellen is what the fear demon in Inquisition, when you're in the Fade, calls Solus. He says, Durth Ma Harellen, which is like a greet, he's like, I greet you trickster. It's like an old, old word for deceiver or trickster. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot, but I looked it up because I was like, I know I recognize that word. But yeah, so there you go. Fun, uh, elven, elven on tip, tidbit. <laughs> Ensure sounds for a rogue whose deeds alone must be remembered. Felison, I was thinking of Felison's arrows. Mantle of the blood dragon, once worn by a great assassin, the crimson mark on its chest is indelible. Uh, once worn by a great hero. Oh, I can, that's right, I can wear, um, I can have the appearance of any armor I would like, not just heavy. Named after the elven word for freedom, these heavy leather robes with golden accents are fit for a god or a mage whose power rivals one. Is that what Solus was wearing? No, it wasn't. Okay. I was like, I mean, it's similar, it's very similar, if it... It actually might be, I don't remember this on the chest plate, but the rest of it looks very much like once worn by a great mage. I mean, this looks like, um, Dragon Age 2 stuff. Let's see. Worn by a great assassin. Or at least this was like, this is, yeah, is it? No. This looks like, I mean, it looks like blood. Like, that's crazy. Like, the whole, like, I guess, like, dripping blood. That's really wild, honestly. Um, it's like the, the dragon, like, the blood plate armor from Mass Effect, which was based off of Dragon Age. Oh, it's not far rendering. I think it kind of, it looks fuzzy on the chest. That's weird. It looks like, it. this looks like it's been spray painted on. The armor is very bulky in this game. Oh, and these must be the matching set. Um, for that. This, that is very cool. Oh, and I wanted to say, I do think it's really interesting that we, that our, that the, that the characters show actual signs of damage, right? Like, it's not just like, ooh, you had a penalty to her health or something, you know? It's like, you know, she took a lot of damage in the last, like, you know, incursion, and, um, her outfit is probably the best, honestly. Um, but, so it's gonna show up on her face, you know? And I really like that. Her prosthetic is really cool, too. I really like it. Very, like, minimalistic, but, like... And, like, obviously a prosthetic is not designed to, like, hide at all. Um, but... I Then she gets to do whatever she wants with it, right? She can, she can be like, look at this. And it's like, oh, dang, you right. Okay, so I am still just wearing my regular stuff. Is that a freaking lamp? There's a freaking lamp over there. Alright, let's chat with her. No? Oh, she wanted to meet me elsewhere, that's right. Again, one of the things that, like, the game looks better than I thought it would. Like, I was really worried about, like, the graphics. But I don't know why everything looks, like, slightly fuzzy. Like, why... Why does it look like we're in a dream world, like, constantly? Where, like, the edges are uncertain. Like, I don't... Like, that feels like a design choice. Oh my gosh, I love that chair. Um... But like I, I'm not a fan of that design choice. Like I just everything looks fuzzy, and it's like this weird like realism, not realism. Nobody runs like that. <laughs> anyway, I gotta not be distracted. Oh, oh my gosh, mosaic painting. Oh my gosh. And like a floating, I, I know there's all this, and like, oh my gosh, this is like what he had in the light. This is like, oh my gosh, it makes sense. 
that why he took why he took up residence why Solus took up residence in the um, the tower that we had um, the rotunda something like that you know like the round tower in Inquisition um, because apparently that's like this place here that he considered home it reminded him of it is how I'm gonna think of it but like this looks just like very similar to what he had um, in Inquisition but like I know there's all this cool stuff but this is like a floating magical desk Do an introduction to the lighthouse once the lighthouse was up, fell, I, I told I said Felisan. Freaking, he was, I, but I think Solus killed him in one of the books, maybe. But like Felisan, the original story is of, um. Okay, I'm gonna say this story. I had to go look it up and I had to like dodge spoilers, I'm pretty sure. I just had to specifically look up. I was like, what's the story? And I was like, just like squint eyed everything. But the story is, as far as I remember, as far as I can read here and as far as I remember, it checks out. Uh, the name Felisan means slow arrow, which comes from a legend of Fen Harel, where a village asked him to slay a beast for them. He shot an arrow up in the sky and went to leave. They asked him how he would save them, and he said he said he never said anything about that. The beast came to the village that night and killed everyone but the children. But before it could kill the children, the arrow came back down from the sky and killed the beast. And in the entry, I believe that I'm thinking of, that it is a codex entry that you find in, like, the Exalted Plains. I believe the keeper of the Dalish um, group that wrote it down was saying something about, like, be careful what you wish for, or, and, or, you... <sighs> when you ask for something, it may not come to you in a way or in a guise that you expect it to, nor do you want it to. You know what I mean? Something like that. Like very much in the trickster motif of like the trickster you can ask the trickster for help but it may not come to you how you want it to or how you think it should you know but once the lighthouse was a place of learning with tools to study the secret workings of great magic when solos rebelled against those who called themselves our gods the lighthouse became his center of operations oh my gosh with tools to study the best ways to free ourselves from the tyranny of the ebonurus you are safe here both those of the flesh and those of the fade any who wish to help are welcome you think they're working together because they never was no veil the magic of the lighthouse will provide for your needs see to your comfort and even help you understand different tongues for those who escaped here from different parts of the empire should you have any other needs ask for the slow arrow and i will help yeah but the name felison translates uh slow arrow to slow arrow because like yeah it's like he it was like a delayed response story oh my gosh Oh, a letter dated six months ago. Watcher Ingelvar, thank you for your latest, latest dispatch concerning your adventure with Ma Master Varric Tethris. Given that you spent much of your life in the Grand Necropolis, traveling further north must be a stimulating prospect. And you will be relieved, no doubt, dear, that the crypts have been silent since your departure. Some of the other Watchers continue to censor your methods during the War of the Banners, but I will work to ensure that they reconsider while you are away. Master Tethris claimed that this Solus is an elven god bear witnessing. Even if Solus is merely a renegade mage using spirits for dire purposes, that alone is a call for a watcher to oppose him. Oh, okay, yeah. That, Solus would be very upset, though, to be compared to that. Um, because he, and that was one of his main quests, like, one of his personal quests in Inquisition was rescuing his spirit from being used. Vorgoth and I wish you fine luck on your journey. Remember, even outside Navarra, the dead are ever ready with their supernal aid. Watch your mirror night, keeper of the seals. Ooh, I get to be aided by the dead. I'm a big codex girly. Can I please? How do I? No, I'm not allowed to read it. Oh, I gotta hover over it. I see. On to Vinter Temp. That's right. We heard the tip. The guy was a t he was a Templar yelling out from that center, like the the, the palace or whatever. When one mentions the Templar Order, you no doubt picture the armored members of the Southern Chantry. Those Templars are trained to combat uncontrolled magic, blood magic, and abominations with the goal of protecting people, including mages, from the most violent manifestations of magic power. However, they also embody the Southern Chantry's control over mages and enforce many of its strict rules and regulations over magic in general. In addition to combat training, these Templars ingest lyrium. This mineral, usually used by mages for enchantments and rituals, grants Templars the ability to resist and dispel magic. The fact that it is also addictive, chaining them to the Chantry and resulting in paranoia, obsession, and ultimately dementia, is often swept under the rug. Yes, we've all heard about that dirty little secret. As you may have surmised by my use of Southern Chantry, this is not the case for the Tevinter Imperium. In Tevinter, we know that magic can only serve if it is allowed to flourish. We do not suppress talent, we nurture it. That is not to say we ignore the dangers of magic and what it might allow those with violent intent and not con combat it. As in the South, our Templars are trained to prevent the excesses of blood magic and to subdue demons as well as those inflicted by possession. 
the excesses of blood magic, hmm, and they subdue demons in particular. But our Templars do not take Illyrium. They do not enforce n unnecessary regulations. They are not given power over mages, but follow the lead of our most esteemed magisterium. They serve the Chantry and the people of the Imperium. I must admit, I rather prefer our way of doing things. From a letter written by Lithia Pallas, living in a border town on the Tevinter Imperium to a cousin on Orle. Okay. Let me... I want to, like, go back out. Okay. Well, if they, I, I'm not going to read all of those right now, but oh my gosh. I recognize some of these. That's Andraste. Neanderthals. Andraste. Okay. I think I will, I'll get to those some other day. I'm a big codex person. Like, oh my gosh, though. Let's see. Let's see. I think there might supposed to be a dragon in there? Like, right here, maybe? I could be totally making that up. Humans have incredible power of pattern identification to the point where they make stuff up sometimes, honestly. Interesting. These are so beautiful. Did I... It's supposed to be a person, maybe? Yes, this one's definitely a person right here walking into the background. There's like a bird here? What is this? Like a bird of some sort? I'm sure to assume everybody in here I see is so is walking into some sort of fire. Yo, I gotta I gotta look around. Three meetings face to face under the sky? Is this a clue? What down here? There's a whole basement? Oh my gosh, we're going down the stairs. You're not that much out of breath. Oh, I didn't think it would open. Good. I really love the designs for all of this. It's really beautiful. The Dread Wolf. Okay, I wasn't gonna read any more card of entries. You caught the Dread Wolf's Olivia, and I. Um, that's the. That's him when he was walking away from you in Trespassers. The same armor, and it's the same pose. And <laughs> most of us have only traveled. Oh my gosh! I really hope this is all working. Yeah, I think we're good. Most of us have only traveled through the Olivians at the whims of those who call themselves our gods. We know them as mere. Oh, so it wasn't like an actual like like highway like we were kind of thinking like just like it like everything was super connected which is why they bring up in the last game that like there's no there's like elven cities but there's no roads between the elven cities so like everyone didn't know how they got from place to place necessarily like there wasn't like a sure like really obvious way that people could conceive of from like like modern people could conceive of you know necessarily turns out they were traveling on the in-between roads um, we know them as mirrors that always go from one to another, a bonded pair linked to no matter the distance. Solus has outsmarted the so-called gods. If we use normal Illuvians, they could track us to our lair. Solus has improved upon June's work. June is the one who made the Illuvians. That makes sense. June is the crafter. Uh, work by creating a mirror whose singing stone, a singing stone, can change its tune to take us to any Illuvian and not just his bonded partner. That's insane. Thus, we can travel wherever this rebellion needs us with no fear of pursuit. Travel is as safe as a normal Olivian. If you have questions, ask for the slow arrow and I will guide you. I'm pretty sure the thing is, is like, Felisad is, like, leaving all these notes, but, like, p potentially from a long, long time ago, obviously. Well, not potentially, obviously from a long time ago. Pretty sure in one of the books, Solon Empire? When Solus is trying to get the Illuvians back, um... Because they, they've been taken away a little, like, bit by bit when he was, like, asleep for 2,000 years, right? And he's trying to get them back. Uh, and he has an agent called Felison who is working with, not Fiona, what is her name? The Empress of Relay's lover. Uh, and he ends up, like, not falling for her, but becoming fond of her. And lets her get away with keeping, like, a third of the Illuvians, essentially. And... It, it's heavily, heavily implied that Solus is the one who shows up and stabs Felisar and kills him for this. And then just <laughs> leaves. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know? Um, 
But who knows? Maybe Phil, maybe we'll actually find... It'd be crazy to see Phyllis on, honestly. Um, okay. The, you called it the Dreadwolves. So would this take me back to Arla then? It's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, there's the god statue. The Evanura statue, maybe I should be more accurate. They aren't gods per se, how we normally think of gods. Why Why do you have automatically opening doors, so is We are going up like some shallow stairs, like girly. Any other? Do I get to just like sit in chairs? Cause like that would be, nope, I don't. Come on, and how are these books still intact? I guess it's the fade, it's not necessarily like decaying, although obviously it, no. Some of this fell apart obviously when, um, when the veil went up, right? And like the, the library of Arlefam, I think that we go to in Inquisition, showcases like we hear from the spirit, right? From the spirit um, entity, uh, people's last moments in the library because everything required magic to survive and separating the, the separating the fade and the regular, or I don't know, separating the two somehow, um, made it so that everything collapsed. Sorry, I think I had a thought, and now I'm, I forgot. Fair degree on the doors. <laughs> that's when it turns, that's when the, I think, bronze turns kind of green. Whoa. <laughs> This is stunning. I think they've outdone themselves on this. Rook, you're awake. And we're... Floating. Fade. This is where people come when they dream, but... Oh! Dwarves don't dream. That is very true. And somehow, I'm here. Yeah, it's unreal. Which means we're here physically. Nev thought we should talk about what to do next. We should. But maybe look around a little. We might be here a while. Harding's an explorer. It is funny to me that she was scouting in the city too. I'm like, city scouting is very different than... Yes! Um, city scouting is different than like, you know, outdoor scouting. Um, and I think we can just... Oh no, okay. I was like, can we just unlock? No, we have to be level 20? I feel like that's gonna take a long time. Wow, they're making this, they're making the specialty very magic y. Fury of the Forge brings burning steel blades rain down on your enemies. This is extensive. Alright, but like. <laughs> And so many things connect to so many things. Oh, this is very confusing. Okay, this is the necrotic route, maybe? I think I'd rather go the necrotic route, because I am the Mourn Watch. <laughs> wow. That's an incredible ability. Wow, the Lords of Fortune stuff is really cool. So each one is kind of associated with the background. The Mornwatch Reaper leeches life from enemies, throws shields with precision, and turns their own pain into strength. Like, you're not limited to it, but they are associated, which does make sense. Alright, well, I'll, um... Maybe work my way towards this. I'll get that one. That one, and Spectral Bulwark. And you can just refund points whenever, which is actually so nice. Okay, I see, I see. Zooming out, we could kind of see the way it sort it, it, Maybe it's like, here's some recommended abilities, which is nice, you know? And the fact that I get to respec whenever is really nice also. This is just like being back in Trespasser. 
Except this is, it is fancier. Like they, they've improved upon it, you know? Do I hear space whales? Are there space whales in the fade? Okay. I remember. Oh, oh, it will eventually expire. Okay. Uh, each person gets their own room. I know that. And that these lamps light up um, when they have something they want to talk about. Cool. I hope I get to like upgrade this. I don't. I don't know if I get to upgrade the area or not. More of like progressing will upgrade Wisps. things. Figures are in the fate, but I swear they're following me. You were right. Strange place you've fallen into, but I'll work with it. You know me. No, I don't. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. I know Varric wanted you for the job. You know the same about me. I made a call that got you injured right after we met. I'll be fine. You trusted me for the job, and I delivered. That's what counts. If we're stuck in this, let's hope you can trust me again. <laughs> we can just ride out the gate. Hey. Hmm. I think we're not gonna be... We're not, like, a world leader on any of this, right? Like, the nice thing about Velgard that I was hoping they would do, and it, it appears that they're doing this from what I've heard from my friends, is that, um... They're making the game a bit more intimate, how Dragon Age 2 was. Like, in Origins, it was kind of like world-changing stuff, you know, like, you have a warden, you have all these, you know, ancient packs, and all these, like, like, you know, Destiny, sort of, or not Destiny, but, like, you have a, a heavy burden to bear, you know what I mean? Um, and then in 2, you're just, you're just a, just a, just a person. Just, just a guy, gender neutral. I, I played, a, I played a woman, obviously, but not obviously, but I, I played a woman. But you're just a guy, like trying to do their best, like keep trying to carve out a little place for themselves and their family and their friends, and like all these big world-changing events are kind of happening around you. And I liked that dynamic because it was just like you trying to do your best with what you had, right? And like the the relationships with your friends was a lot more important in that game, I feel, or a lot more uh, front and center. And then in Inquisition, you're at the top. You're lofty and lonely a little bit is how one of my friends explained it. And I thought that did a really good job where it was like you just even like Varric says it at one point that like, you know, he doesn't he doesn't really see you as a person, he sees you as a symbol, and that can be a very lonely thing. So like again, big world changing character stuff, you know. Um, so I was hoping they'd kind of follow the pattern and like go back to having a more intimate personal experience the cat is so cute and i can see him because he's in the mirror and it's so cute um so yeah i'm, I'm hoping for that so I mean, i'm playing trying to kind of play somebody who's chill uh i think she would be she should be upset about this it's not that i don't i'm just I am, i'm sorry you got hurt it was my call and what if it happens again or to someone else? I don't know. That's the raw deal we get. Right. You take a lot of notes. What about? Lately, what we know, or knew, before Solus changed the game. And it's... Not much. I'm mm. sure Lace would hate to hear that, but one step at a time. We'll figure this out. I'm sure of it. Really? Do you know something I don't? She's positive. No, we just... Well, yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that's the job. She's like, I don't have anything, but um, we just got to, right? <laughs> you know? We have approval. The Wisps. They look kind of like how they did, but like very upgraded from Origins. The Wisps are singing... You take a lot of notes. I mean, yeah, but like you didn't you couldn't see that very well. I'm pretty sure in the gameplay trailer I saw the place looked better. Like I think it's going to improve as we go. This is somebody else's house, but nobody's home. We have a new Dreadwolf statue. It's a little more realistic, less stylized. A little bit. 
I think the more stylized ones are actually probably from like pre-rebellion times. So that is just my assumption because it matches a lot of the older designs. Like it fits in with the architecture and like art style of that time period, but things would change significantly in any sort of like wartime rebellion upheaval. You know, like your artistic, your architecture, like stuff changes and you can track that. At least a little. It wasn't supposed to go this way. What do we do now? What do we do? Oh wow, she's having a hard time. <sighs> well, she was totally fine just like three minutes ago. Holiday? Oh, hey Rook. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> but are you okay? Did you ever find places like this chasing Solus with Varric? Not exactly, but with Solus, it was always about the Fade, or the Veil, vale, or some other in-between place. I love her outfit. Varric always hated it, though. Mm. At least this place feels different. Maybe safer? You have plans. Uh, I'm going to ask if she's okay. Harding, are you? Doing all right? I don't know. Are you? Is anyone? Anyway, it doesn't matter how I'm doing. It does! What are we gonna do about this mess? I, we were I, going to go back through the Alluvian, right? Let's start with that. As soon as we can. You know you can take some time to just... Yeah. You, know, you sound like Varric. Oh my god. Varric goodness. and I started this. And I can't stop. Not now. Don't ask me to. So, come get me when you're ready to go. All right? She's wearing slippers. I just she that they're like wooden clog slippers. That's really cute. Um, but yeah, no, she did. I guess she seems like a go 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 person. I was never super like you know woo Harding and like but I know a lot of people really wanted to like have her be a companion or like romancer. And I know she's a romance option now, and I'm happy for everybody who gets what they want. But I was always just like, oh okay, that's nice, you know. So uh, it's kind of weird to see her as a companion. But I mean, I kind of wish I could have asked her about the plants, but it was like she was obviously upset and. Needed to chit chat, or she should chit chat rather. She doesn't seem to want to because she's just like a go go go. And I think with Varric being her, that would like take it out of your sails a little bit, right? Like she's obviously well experienced now, especially by this point. But like Varric is like a constant, you know what I mean? And like if the, when that changes, when that seems to falter because of a, you know, a massive unseen injury, you know, or situation, it's like that would really pull the rug out from underneath you. The cat is meowing at me, so I have to go let him out. It is very apropos that I have the, I mean, I knew it would be, but the Solus uh, tapestry bag here. The art is reminiscent of, uh, well, I mean, it's actually, it's just pulled straight from Trespasser uh, mosaic panels. So, all right, I have to stop and eat more. Delicious Parmesan bites. Can I go up here? I keep pressing Y to jump. I've been playing too many Nintendo games. Oh, hello? More info for me? A faded note. All new faded for her. That was Solus's quest line, and it was one of those things that when you switch the letters around, it said, I am the Dread Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this place. We planned a rebellion here once. Said we'd change the future of the elves, throw off tyrants, and we did. Now the path outside is fractured. It'll be hard rekindling all the Olivians. Solus, if you see this, I'll be looking for you out in this world and in the mortal one. Don't cause too much trouble before I get there. What? <gasps> Who? But... <gasps> Mytho? Or Felison? Is it Felison, maybe? You know what I mean? But then if it's Felison, Felison died! Maybe. Who knows? I mean, I don't think necessarily, like, the books are not necessarily, necessarily canon, but, like, uh, and I don't mind that Bioware tends to be flexible with their canon because it makes things more fun. But, um, oh my gosh. Somebody's been here after. How did they get here? Mythol? That is Mythol. The, like, that's not even just, like, the Flemeth. Mythal, that's like, I think I'm like, I, well, hey, let me check. You can, we can apparently look at it. Use the 
to rotate the bat statue? Hold on, I gotta read things first. To enter the library passage, three pairings must meet face to face. Okay, is that what was that? That it was like it was like oh three something three had to face, and I was like what? I don't like that's obviously a clue for something, but I don't know. And this is Solus. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Their relationship was just. I think this is Solus. Oh, it's hard to see. Yes, it is. Their relationship was so tragic. Like what we, what little bits we have of it, just make me sob. Okay, what do we? Oh, cool. See, I just I'm looting stuff and I'm selling it. Three something somethings have to face to something something. Oh, well, okay. These two should face each other, obviously. Gosh dang, I don't know where to read what I did. Three somethings have to face each other, so I'm assuming. These two would need to face each other. And why was there, there, it's interesting that they're putting in a third one. Usually it's like Solus. Oh, okay, I was like, usually it's Solus and Mythol, right? Like they're usually associated with each other. Um, but apparently we have to find more sets of statues. Three sets of statues of these two total. Okay. Interesting. If we are in the Fade, we should be able to see the Black City. Oh, dang. I don't know where the next one is. So it's gonna be like trying to figure out where where he is. Yeah, don't look down indeed. Jeez Louise. Alright, alright, we'll go. Or... Oh, that was cool. The movement seems nice. Like, as long as it's not anything crazy, you can just hop right over it while you're running. You say this is the workshop, but oh, there she is. Oh, there he is. Okay. We'll try to get these two to face each other. That other one, I'm still not sure who she, which, like, where her opposing number is. Where did he go? I say all the time. Oh my gosh, this statue. I love the statue updates. Okay, he's below this. Okay. <laughs> just yeet myself off. Don't mind me. I got a valuable item. Listen, I can't. I have to read them. On Divine Imperatives, the helm of the Solar is destroyed. Elgarnon's favorite torture is over. Too many agents have been rescued with their minds burnt out by that memory of an enraged sun. I feel less in here. The helm was not created to torment, but the Ebonyrs are not as we are. A god's ruminations carry their own will, and Imperatives, memory bleeds into their icons and transmutes them as fire begets fire. For our wolf lord, who puts so much of himself into his creations. The wolf lord. <laughs> <coughs> Getting to know more of Solus, who he was, like, back in the day, even if it's through the eyes, the lens of somebody who was not necessarily equal with him, and so then there will be, like, biases and potentially putting him up on pedestal, you know, like, stuff like that, but still, oh, this is such, my heart is like, bleh. <laughs> he puts so much of himself in his creations, what imperatives do they carry? The heart of a rebellion must re remain hidden. Yet the light of divinity is uncontainable. We must be swift. The th a thought lingers. Even as he saves us, what does he impart upon us? Reflections of Shiran, one who renounced Darenthal. Dur I mean, there's Durthamon. Durthamon and Faladin are the supposed twins. The friend of the dead and the guide, I think, of the dead. Interesting, too, because we're having artifacts, right? This is, like, indicating to us that, like, artifacts are carrying memory, carrying power. That's what I think the orb did in many ways, too. Like, I think that was Solus's orb himself. Um, I don't... It could have been somebody else's, but the helm 
was apparently Elgarnand, and there's like a, that old story, right? Or like Elgarnand, like a furious son, <clears throat> for some reason, something happens, and he gets angry, and he like burns the the earth, right? Like with too much sun, and the earth like weeps, right? Um, and Mythal is the one who comes out of the waves to soothe his anger. Um, like she, I think she comes out of the waves. She comes out of, I think she comes out of the water, like even as it burns, like. She comes out of the water and soothes his rage. Um, and so she is justice and, like, temperance, sort of. That's the second. One more to go. I wonder if I could just throw myself off. I don't particularly want to try, but... Oh, there's so much more. I'll get around to it. We obviously, like, a bunch of this stuff is, um, very... Um, like, blocked off. Like, there's, like, branches growing up and stuff to keep us from accessing it, so... We'll get around to it. But unfortunately, I should probably call it here. This I've been recording for an hour. I have no idea how long the episode will be, so... Thank you all <clears throat> for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm now going to cut over and with my Patreon. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Really quick, I wanted to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including the free members. There are a few of you out there, but I also want to say thank you to my Acorn tier patron, Fane. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. I want to give an extra special shout out to my sapling tier patrons, Reese Galito and Sebastian James. Thank you so much for your support, you guys. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me in the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.